What do you think of, of Joshua's loss there, Tyson? I thought Andy Ruiz's win was amazing. I thought he'd done absolutely Look fantastic. Look at your response right there. I like that. Um, you went, you went, you went I'm absolutely Andy. over the moon for Andy. Mm -hmm. Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Mm -hmm. How long have you known him? I've not, I don't know him personally, but <laughs> I've, I've kept an eye on his career, his whole yeah, career. Right. So um, do you not want to talk about Anthony Joshua through that response with um, you right there? I, it's not whether I do or don't. Mm -hmm. The man has just been flattened, so let him have a little bit of dignity without me ripping him okay. on, on TV. Well, yeah. I did I did notice your tweet was uh, was very um, kind. And it was I did do a kind tweet, but then I destroyed him in the media I yesterday. Did <laughs> <laughs> so that's where I'm trying to figure out where you... Where Psychological you... warfare. You build <laughs> him up and smash him down. Yeah, I mean, we're showing the tweet on the screen right here. We have our back and forths, but Anthony Joshua changed his stars through life. Heavyweight boxing, these things happen. Rest up, recover, regroup, and come again. You give him a little fist pound emoji. Yeah. And then you figuratively fist pounded him in the media yesterday. Yes. Well deserved as well. <laughs> because you know what? If it was me yes. and I got knocked out with a little fat guy, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, then they'd destroy me. His promoter and him would not leave off with me. And I thought, you know what? I'm being too kind here. Why am I being so kind to people who have slated me my whole career? Mm -hmm. People who have been begging for me to lose on every fight I've ever had. And it just goes to show, doesn't it? A bodybuilding ain't boxing. Stick to your own sport and leave the fights to the fighting men. So I asked this fighting man, looking at Joshua, one of the things that many observers are commenting on was his reaction to losing where he did not seem to take it very hard, and he was smiling, taking photographs with Ruiz, and when he was, in fact, counted out, it wasn't hopping mad or anything like that. Do, what, what do you take out of that reaction, Tyson Fury? I don't take Fury? a lot out of it, to be honest, other than the fact that he was happy to lose. Um, I think when people have a lot of pressure on them and they build a big record and a big reputation, sometimes they're happy just to get it out of the way, that first loss. I don't, I don't know what was going through the guy's mind because I'm not inside of his head, mm -hmm. but I can't understand what was going on. Can you tell as a fighter when another fighter gives up? Yes. Do you think that happened? 100%. He didn't want to continue. The referee, you know, when I got put down in round 12 by Wild, I had to convince the referee that I was able to fight on. I held him on both shoulders and I said, I'm okay. He went, yeah. I said, yes, I'm okay to continue. He went, jog to the left. I jogged to the left. Jog to the right. I jogged to the right. I had to prove I was willing to fight. AJ just holding onto the ropes with his two big eyes open like that, mm -hmm. saying, yeah, I'm okay, but holding onto ropes. He didn't show any signs of wanting to continue. He didn't so. even have his. He didn't even have uh, his mouthpiece, and he didn't I, even. He was struggling with a mouthpiece the whole night. So Tyson Fury here on the Rich Eisen Show. Let us, I, I'm just fascinated by how you got up from the, the floor, got up from the, the depths of where you were against Deontay Wilder, okay? And that's just one of the most remarkable images I've seen in sports in a long time. Hell yeah! Where you, where you got up from the mat, okay? What were you thinking? Were you... Were you with it for all 10 well, seconds? When I or... uh, came round after about four seconds and opened my eyes, obviously realised, I thought, I'm on the floor here, get up. Mm -hmm. um, so I got up. And the thing with me is, is I always say it's quite easy to beat me. You've got to knock me down and nail me to that canvas because if you don't, I'll continue to fight. If there's an ounce of breath left in my body where I'm able to get up and fight, I'm not knocked out cold, then I'll continue to fight on because that's me. I wouldn't be the man I am today if I was going to quit, if I didn't want to fight on anymore. You know, you meet, you meet people in life and you have different obstacles that we try and get over, but at the end of the day, it's, it's the fight in the person. So you were out for four seconds. Yeah. You come to right there in the middle of Staples here in downtown LA. Yeah. And it dawns on you, I need to get up within six seconds. Yeah. And it took you how many seconds? Not very long. I just jumped straight back up. Okay. What do you say to people that say it took you seven seconds to get up after that four um, to do the math? I don't say much to them because it's, it's not really uh, 
their call, is it? They're not the referee or anybody else. So it was what it was. But what, what do people say to the fact that I won 10 out of 12 rounds and got a draw? What have they got to say about that? <laughs> that they had to rip a, a man off who's been to hell and back, struggle with mental health, had three years out of the ring on drugs and alcohol, come back and kick the heavyweight champion of the world ass all over LA and Staples Centre. And you have to rob a man who's been down and out to get a victory or hold on to something. What do people got to say about that? For more of The Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download The Rich Eisen Show app.